Okay, hi there, and uh, welcome to a macroeconomics revision video. This time looking at the concept of the liquidity trap. Now, the liquidity trap is a useful concept to use when evaluating the effectiveness of changes in monetary policy in achieving macroeconomic objectives. So, as a response to the global financial crisis uh, 10 years ago now, the majority of central banks cut their policy interest rates to historic lows as part of a big monetary policy stimulus to cut the risk of a deflationary recession. Uh, but after the 2008 financial crisis, the recoveries in many European countries, in the United States and Japan and the UK, were more sluggish and less inclusive than the majority of policymakers and politicians and indeed macroeconomists had expected. So in most of these countries, interest rates have remained very low, even though there's been a recovery in the world economy. So what is a liquidity trap? Well, a liquidity trap happens when a period of very low uh, nominal interest rates, so nominal money interest rates close to zero, and a lot of cash in the economy held by households and businesses and banks, it fails to stimulate aggregate demand, either during a slowdown or a recession or indeed the early stages of a recovery. In other words, the liquidity trap is when interest rates uh, lose their effectiveness, if you like, the interest elasticity of demand reduces. Here's an example of how interest rates were cut. This chart shows the effective federal funds rate in the United States since the start of the millennium. The US Federal Reserve, the central bank in the States, cut their main policy interest rate, can you see in the chart here, from just over 5% in 2008 to virtually zero within the space of a year. Now, This big monetary stimulus certainly helped to avoid a 1930s style depression, uh, but many other Western economies, including Japan, have seen interest rates at rock bottom, close to zero, but have still struggled to generate strong economic growth. Hence, the idea of a liquidity trap. So why does a liquidity trap happen? Well, uh, let me focus on two aspects. The key here is to understand that in a liquidity trap, monetary policy, working through very low interest rates, can become less effective in stimulating aggregate demand, output and incomes. Two main focuses. One is the behaviour of banks themselves, commercial banks. Typically, after or in the middle of a financial crisis, banks are required to hold more capital. Therefore, they're less willing to lend out. They're, they're, they're not willing to increase their leverage. And if they do lend out to businesses and perhaps to households, um, they might charge a risk premium on any, new, on any new loans, especially perhaps to business customers. So there can become a disconnect, if you like, between the low interest rates being charged, being um, set by the central banks, and the higher interest rates on loans being set by commercial lenders, such as the banks. Second focus, I think, is even more important, and that's the impact of um, the impact on low on private sector businesses and consumers. Typically, when you've had a big external shock, a big recession, fears of depression. People's confidence, business animal spirits, is pretty low. And therefore, even if interest rates are to fall and stay very low for a long time, people's confidence doesn't necessarily get them to go to the bank and try and take out a loan to fund a business or to, to fund a new house or a home extension. Indeed, many people in the aftermath of a, an asset, asset price recession or a big slump, many people are focused on cutting their existing debts rather than taking out new loans. Hence, even if interest rates are very low, uh, it's less effective as a policy in stimulating consumer spending, which is a big part of aggregate demand. So what can we do finally to perhaps overcome a liquidity trap? Here are four key points. The first, from a Keynesian perspective, is that in a liquidity trap, if monetary policy is becoming less effective, then fiscal policy, changes in government spending, changes in taxation, changes in the amount the government borrows, the budget deficit, that may become more important, more significant. For example, Keynesians would argue that there may be a good moment 
particularly if bond yields are low, to increase your budget deficit, to widen your fiscal deficit, perhaps to fund government investment spending designed to lift aggregate demand through the circular flow and ultimately increase the supply of money. Second point, going uh, anti-clockwise here, is that central banks may opt to use negative interest rates in a bid to reduce the real interest rate and encourage more borrowing and savings. So some countries, Switzerland, Japan and Denmark, for example, have actually cut some of their interest rates, their policy interest rates, below zero as a kind of extreme policy measure to try to avoid deflation and kickstart their economies. Third point, of course, if you're familiar with monetary policy in the last 10, 15 years, is that in the liquidity trap, if low interest rates aren't working, central banks may supply the banking system with extra money, extra liquidity, particularly via quantitative easing or QE, designed again to increase the liquidity of the banking system to try to encourage banks to lend to each other and increase the flow of funds available for people who need to borrow money. And finally, and this is, I think, a really key point. In a world where monetary policy is becoming less effective through the interest rate channel, quite a few governments increasingly are, are turning to the exchange rate as, as, as a key instrument of monetary policy. So central banks and their governments may decide perhaps to switch from a free floating exchange rate towards a managed floating exchange rate using official intervention in currency markets, for example, to try to reduce the exchange rate to achieve a competitive depreciation. Cuts, falls in the exchange rate often have an equivalent effect as reductions in interest rates. So if interest rates cuts are not working, perhaps currency intervention could work as well. And that takes you into the economics of free floating versus managed floating exchange rates, which is another topic video. Uh, lessons from Japan. Well, the Japanese economy has struggled for nearly 30 years to break free from the effects of a big collapse in asset prices, which happened in the early 1990s. Look at this chart, finally, showing Japanese policy interest rates since 1955. Well, let's go to the early 1990s on the chart. Bank of Japan cut their interest rates to 0.5% in 1995, and they've remained below 1% ever since. But the Japanese economy has continued to struggle to achieve economic growth. Prime Minister Abe's Abenomics strategy, of course, is an attempt to kickstart the Japanese economy to grow more quickly and to lift inflation into positive territory. They have a 2% inflation target. Uh, the fear is that other Western economies may be in a process of Japanification. In other words, they may be they may be on the threshold of another number of years where low interest rates are not kickstarting economic growth. Hopefully that's been useful in explaining and understanding a little bit about the liquidity trap and how you can use it in your macroeconomics. Okay, thank you.